So as we continue our look on speciation and its role in macroevolution, we're going to be taking a bit of a detour on the idea of understanding how speciation occurs, which is through allopatric or sympatric mechanisms, and we're going to be looking more so now at what we consider the rate of speciation, how fast and how visible speciation is to us as a scientist. So we'll entitle this next flowchart, Rate of Speciation 1. This flowchart will be devoted to understanding what we call the fossil record. And specifically from this fossil record, we're going to be analyzing different pieces of evidence. Evidence specifically that comes from the fossil record in question. So when we say fossil record, what we're really referring to is this idea of being able to exav excavate and dig out fossils and physically I would consider it see the idea of speciation occurring. We can actually see, for lack of a better phrase, speciation. And this seeing of speciation occurs because it's seen within the fossils that we uh, excavate, that we notice, the fossil records specifically. So when we see speciation within these fossil records, um, we see this speciation happen what we consider suddenly um, within fossil records of different species in question, and that actually appears to us rather suddenly. Okay. In essence, what we're saying here is that speciation is a rapid event based off of the fossil record. We see a new species rapidly appear, and that's why I use the phrase C. And what we, at, what we also notice based off of this is that this new rapid appearance actually, after it's established itself, it persists. And we say it persists unchanged, meaning that the species in question, though it rapidly appeared in a speciation event, it stays relatively normal, stays relatively how it is post-speciation event, and persists unchanged within the fossil record. And then finally, we also notice something uh, rather weird in the sense that we see this species uh, later on disappear entirely. It actually disappears, and this is all in fact, without any trace of what we call a transitional species, without any transitional species. So what we say is without any transitional species. And now we have to understand and figure out why this happens. Why are we missing a you know key link, like a transitional species, amongst this rapid speciation, this long, unchanged persistence of a species, and then this disappearance that is all out of the fossil record? And we can actually answer these two questions by looking at two different models of speciation, and specifically the rate of speciation. Remember, we're trying to figure out why does speciation happen so fast, stay so long, and then disappear so suddenly without any trace of a transitional species. Two different mechanisms we can look at. One of them is called punctuated equilibrium. Punctuated equilibrium is an idea that we did briefly cover in Darwinian evolution, but we're going to expand upon the knowledge that we already have on this idea. Punctuated equilibrium um, was an idea or hypothesis and theory developed by two scientists, Elridge and Gold. And these two came up with this idea that you have punctuations, meaning that you have points at which you have large amounts of speciation, and then you follow that with equilibrium. You follow that with persistent unchangingness, let's say. We can uh, put that to words by stating that speciation itself occurs... So we'll say speciation occurs in rapid bursts. That's what we mean by punctuated. It happens rapidly at different punctuated sessions, let's say. Speciation occurs in rapid bursts, but with these rapid bursts also comes points of equilibrium. They call this long periods of what is known as stasis. Stasis is the idea, if you know the word homeostasis, so let me rewrite that, long periods of what we call quote-unquote, stasis. If you know the word homeostasis, homeo means same and stasis means state. And when we're talking about long periods of state steadiness over here, this is what we essentially mean by when we combine a rapid burst of speciation, as seen in the fossils, rapid new species, but then we see those species stay for a long time. They stay steady and they stay in a period, a long period of stasis, as stated by this theory. In addition, punctuated equilibrium suggests the following. It actually suggests that 
the fossil record isn't complete. Okay, the fossil record isn't complete. What we mean by this is that there is nothing missing in the idea. So we can say, i.e., there's nothing missing. When we look at the fossil record, the fossil record itself does not show these transitional species because they're not supposed to be there. Okay, It's not a complete overall look at what actually was there however many million years ago that these fossils developed. So because we have an incomplete fossil record, it makes sense. It makes sense that there is no transitional species because this fossil record itself is incomplete. And finally, we can uh, attribute these rapid bursts of, uh, let's say, speciation, the bursts of speciation. Uh, Gould and Eldridge said that they were due to changes, rapid changes, large changes in the environment. And that makes sense. Big environmental changes will lead to big speciation events, will lead to big adaptation, big uh, overall um, speciation events that are devoted to adapting to a big change in the environment. So that's our punctuated equilibrium theory, and that is opposed by what we call the gradual model. The gradual model is the other way to explain the fossil record, to explain the rate of speciation that we see, and it's a bit less drastic. It's a bit more gradual, thus the name. It was developed by Charles Darwin, and in this gradual model, he states the following. He states that populations uh, slowly diverge from one another. Okay, so this is key. They slowly diverge from one another another. Instead of having rapid speciation bursts, we have slow divergence. Slowly two things become more and more different from each other. This leads to what he referred to as the gradual accumulation. Okay, So it's a very gradual accumulation of certain things and we're going to say that in this situation, the gradual accumulation of what he referred to as adaptive changes. And if you gradually accumulate more and more adaptive changes, if you gradually diverge a two species from each other, you will eventually establish a rather slow and constant rate of speciation. So slow slash constant rate. That's the whole idea behind the gradual model. The punctuated equilibrium model states that you have rapid bursts and then really long periods of steadiness. Here it's a lot more gradual in the sense that you have a slower gradual adaptive uh, accumulation of changes that leads to a slow and constant rate of speciation. Now unfortunately with the gradual model, uh, Darwin was a bit off in the sense that this is actually rarely seen, so it's, it's um, rarely seen uh, in the fossil record. So we'll say rarely seen in fossil record. And because it's rarely seen in the fossil record, this is mainly due to the fact um, uh, because of the environmental conditions that were of, at, at the time of the fossil formation. And what I mean by this is, let me just write this down, rarely seen in fossil record because environmental conditions didn't suit fossil formation. So we have to go back to our question, didn't suit fossil formation. And our question to start off this flowchart was, why are these transitional species disappearing? Why don't we see them? Well, Darwin would state that the fossil record itself is faulty because environmental conditions have to be perfect for fossils to show up. And if those environmental conditions aren't perfect, you won't have true fossil formation. And if you don't have true fossil formation, you will of course be missing certain transitional species. Now, unfortunately, with the gradual model, um, there is no mention and no information about any type of reproductive isolation. So no info uh, about reproductive isolation. And we've been talking about reproductive isolation so much that um, it's sort of been thrown off in terms of the ideas of punctuated equilibrium and gradual model. Those are two sort of things that this, these, both of these models don't really touch upon that greatly. The main idea behind this flowchart is simple. What we have to understand is that there are two main schools of thought in terms of how fast speciation occurs. Some say in the punctuated equilibrium school of thought that speciation happens really fast and then you have long, long, long periods of very steady, um, simple lack of change. And this is all due to the environment. 
Darwin, on the other hand, promotes a gradual model in which populations naturally and slowly diverge from one another, gradually accumulate different adaptive changes, leading to an overall slow and constant rate, all determined by the environment, and that environment itself does not suit fossil formation, and thus you don't see transitional species. In the next flowchart, we'll continue our discussion on the rate of speciation by looking at a really interesting experiment done on a wild sunflower that can actually show our speciation in a lab.